you are welcome to our second segment of the lecture series, Introduction to Geography, SS2. Now, here are the themes for discussion for this section. Number one, we have the Earth and the Solar System. Two, we have Environment and its Resources. Number three, we have Regional Geography of Nigeria. Next one there is um, map reading and interpretation. Number five, we have economic and human geography. And lastly, number six, we have introductory geographic information system, GIS. Now, I want you to know that these themes are in accordance with the NEC curriculum. So, we'll look at some of the reasons why we should study geography before we proceed. Now, as a result of studying geography, we understand our environment and the problems associated with it. Geography also helps us to know more about each other and our culture, and also to understand how to interact and depend on one another and um, the environment. Geography also solves environmental, political, and economic, as well as social problems. And um, geography also helps in the understanding the composition of the earth and um, how they could be benefit or could be of benefit to us. And finally, geography can help to make a career. Now, so geography can help to make a career. Let's look at uh, some of the potential geographic careers that one could delve into. Number one, we have urban planning and community development. We also have cartography, which has to do with the making of maps, or production of maps. We have geology, we have to do with study of the earth also, and um, um, we have aviation, military planners, we have GIS specialists, we have climatology, we have transport management, environmental management and assessment, we have tourism development, and biogeography slash ecology environmental impact analyst, geomorphology, hydrogeohydrology, and we have research and lecture. There are many others, but these are some of the potential geographic careers that we could delve into as a result of studying geography. Now, let us consider water as um, an energy system. Under this, we will look at the factors affecting the velocity of a river. One, we have the volume of water released. So when the higher the volume of water released by the river, the higher the velocity. Number two, we also have the slope of the river. The steeper the slope, the higher will be the velocity of the water in the river. And three, it will have the shape of the river valley. For a river which flows, or a river will, will, will tend to flow with more energy through a flat, wide, you know, valley than through a narrow, uh, deep valley because the former has a larger surface area. And number four, the amount and size of material. You know, the greater the speed of the river, the greater the material it can carry. Now, there are processes of river erosion. So we we'll look at them one after the other. There are about four. Number one is the hydraulic action. Here, the fast flowing water forces itself into cracks and cavities within the valley under pressure and um, it in turn enlarges these cracks. Number two, we have corrosion. Corrosion is the breaking away or the wearing away of the sides and floor 
of the river valley with the aid of sun, pebbles, seed, or boulders, you know, which are being transported while they are moving. They eventually widen and deepen the river valley. Number three, we have attrition. Attrition is the wearing down of um, the load as they collide with one another and uh, with the floor and sides of the river valley. As these collisions continue, these materials are tend to be broken, you know, gradually. Those who were initially boulders are broken into pebbles and um, smaller pieces. And finally, we have solution. This has to do with the chemical action of water on the materials it comes in contact with while flowing. So let's look at now um, transportation processes. Transportation processes. Now the first process is solution. You know, some rock materials dissolve in water and are carried in solution from the upper to the lower course of the river. Next process is trans, uh, suspension. The lighter the particles of solid materials are carried you know, in suspension as the water flows. That means lighter particles are carried you know, in the water as the water keeps flowing. And then we have saltation. Saltation here has to do with a case where larger particles are moved in series of hoops or uh, jumps along the stream bed. You know, instead of being suspended while the water is moving, in this case, you know, they are kind of jumping as the water moves on. Now, there's traction as the last process. Traction involves a large fragments of the materials being rolled or pushed along in um, the river. Let us look at some erosional features of a river. One of such features is uh, the V-shaped valley. Now, owing to the lateral corrosion along the bank of a river, the bank tends to widen and as a result gives rise to what we call the V-shaped valley. Another feature here is uh, meander. Now, owing to the sluggish movement of water, as well as low gravity and heavy load, the river is unable to move in a straight line, thus widening the course of the river, and um, the course also develop what we call uh, a meander. We discover that because of the factors we mentioned earlier, the gravity, uh, the sluggish movement of water, and the heavy load, probably which, is, which it carries, that has you know, prevented or made the river, the movement of the water, not to be straight, but in um, some sort of widening or curving, curving nature, thus giving rise to an, a feature which we call meander. Another feature here is a river cliff. Now, this river cliff is a phase of a rock which is standing steeply at the bank of a river. We also have the positional features. The positional features include the oxbow lake, swamp plain, and delta. Now, the oxbow lake is a feature that is found at the lower course of a river. It has a horse shape or a horseshoe shape. You no, know, with a shallow convex bank and a deep uh, concave bank. It is found in areas like in the Mississippi and um, Mecca. Another depositional feature here is the flood plain. Flood plain is a gently sloping plain of alluvium which covers the floor of um, a valley along with the river flows in a meandering channel. Now, we talked about meander as one uh, feature, a rational feature. So, in the uh, flood plane here, which is a depositional feature, we have also considered uh, the fact that as the, 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 the water flows 
you know, gently slope through a sloping plain of alluvium, and which also covers the floor of the valley which the river flows. The channel through which it flows is a meandering channel. So that's the point I'm trying to establish here. Another depositional feature here is delta. A delta, or we say what we call a delta fan, is um, delta is a, a, is a fan-shaped alluvial plain that is formed as a result of deposition of fine materials, like sediments, uh, by a river, you know, as it reaches or enters a sea or maybe an ocean. There are different types of delta. We have here the aqua delta, we have the best foot delta, and we also have the estuarine delta. The aqua delta consists of both coarse and fine materials, or fine sediments, you know, with the shape of an inverted cone. An example of such delta is the Niger delta in Nigeria. Now, the best foot delta this type of delta consists of very fine materials, which are commonly known as seals, 